Hi, y'all. Welcome to the channel. We're over here in the town of Prosper, Texas. We're going to take a look around and see what we see. I'm going to tell you a story about how I accidentally drained that water tower right there. 400,000 gallons of water lost. Let's go cruise around, do some swerving. I'll tell you about it. Ride with me. So as I rolled up into the town of Prosper, the population sign said 35,400. So they have done some serious growing here lately. Looks like they're directing some traffic here. Yeah, give me one of those signs. Stop, slow, something. Slow? Okay, we'll go slow. Good job, fellas. Good job. Do I keep going? Let's see. I want to keep going here. Watch out. Watch out. So, I don't think they have a town square. I think they just got some little strips little old town area which I believe is right here let's go take a left do some looking around over here famous in Oregon huh. life journey church Oh yeah, that's pretty nice stuff. Lifestyle Boutique, Texas Amps and Axes, Inappropriate Trucker Hats. That looks like that'd be a good place to stop. Um, dinner, live music, The Gin, Prosper, Texas, Breakfast, Lunch, okay. So they're booming pretty good over here. And then got the old working part of town. My favorite part of town. Okay, looks like the road's closed to the right. Um, let me go to the left. These are all new shops. takes us over. We just basically went around the new city building. It looks like a giant three-story building. First Street. I'm surprised to see these trailer houses still here. Yep, yep. We're going for it, guys. through these city offices here, see what it actually is. I believe it's the city hall and all that. I don't even think it says what it is. It just says West First Street. Um, I believe there's a library around the back, I think is what the sign said. And it just says Prosper. Town Hall Business Hours. I had the hours on the door. We came through here. Well, we didn't come through here, but we came down. It 
front of us on one more street. It was down in the middle of town. We stop. Blended. Parking. I like the way these shops look old, even though they're not old. Oh, that one actually is old. It's just had a facelift. Nice fit. Let's go look around. Check out the neighborhood. If you've watched my videos before, you'll know that we usually cruise around the old neighborhoods. I don't want to go look at new cookie cutter houses that all look the same. Reminds me of that old song, Little Boxes. Little boxes made of ticky tacky. Older neighborhoods always have something different, something unique. They don't just build the same house over and over again. Which that's what I did for a long time. I built the same house over and over again. So I didn't know that they had the little strip trailer houses. I'm sure none of this will be here for very long. This is not what most people see when they look at Prosper, Texas. They're looking at these $500,000 million houses with the property owner association. These trailer houses over here are not about that. There's some cookie cutters right around the corner. Let's go look at a couple of them. Once you see about four of them, you've seen all of them. We've got a park over here. Oh no, it's just, uh, it's a school. It's not a park. Businesses. Y'all are a little shaky up there, aren't you? Yeah, Prosper's a railroad town. Railroad tracks are running alongside us on the left over here. I built a few buildings on the other side of the railroad tracks over there. We did some plumbing on those. I think we did seven buildings in a little strip. One of our other guys did three of them, and then I came in and finished the seven. I did the other four. Prosper Trail. Here's your cookie cutter houses. If you got a million dollars and you want a neighbor that has a house about 12 feet away from yours, you can come live in one of these neighborhoods. I have no desire to do that. I would rather live in a shack on, uh, you know, some acreage than have a mansion with no outdoor space. I think being outside is important. Thirty-five thousand people. It definitely looks like thirty-five thousand people. These houses are just stacked in here, one after another. Got some nice wide roads, fancy landscaping, nice green area over there in the neighborhood, little park area, retention ponds with the fountains and stuff. 
got pretty much everything you need around here in shopping centers, banks, restaurants. We'll sit through this red light. We'll get back with you. We made it through the light. We turned right on Preston Road. We're heading back south on Preston. I did a big project down here. I'm a plumber and I'm a new construction plumber. I started out years ago building houses, new houses. I moved on to doing commercial projects and now I run large uh, commercial projects. I run the plumbing side of it. So I've done several big shopping centers. Um, ones that have all kinds of different businesses in it, little strip strip malls, I guess. It's not really a strip mall, but um, so I'll get on these some of these big projects and we'll have 15 permits. I'll have a whole bunch of different buildings or different lease spaces that we do and a lot of the times we'll just build the shell of the building just the outside of it, the roof. We don't do any interior finish out until they lease the space out. And then someone else will come in and finish out the lease space and put in whatever they want, which we do both ends of it. We do finish out and we do just the shelves, but a lot of my bigger projects are just, are the shell spaces. Like the bigger buildings we'll call a uh, anchor building and they'll have 15 different tenants in it. You'll have stuff like this one up here. It's got a Ross, a Old Navy, a DSW shoes, just a whole bunch of different lease spaces in one long building. And then you'll have some standalone buildings that'll also have lease spaces in them or they'll just be one person will lease out the whole building. Um, so this project that I did up here is called the Gates of Prosper. There's actually two sides of it. There's the east side and the west side. The west side is to the right and the east side is to the left. So we're going to take a left up here into the Gates of Prosper. Um, you'll see when we turn left at this light You'll see two buildings on the right-hand side and two buildings on the left-hand side after we make the turn. So I had these four buildings out here are standalone buildings. I did all four of these and then I did the big long um, anchor building is what they call it. And I did one other building. So I'm gonna just take you, take you up here. We're just gonna drive past the big anchor building just so you got an idea of what I'm talking about. See, there's two buildings to the right, two buildings to the left. The one that says hibachi and sushi, and then there's some over here to the left hand side. So I did all four of these buildings. And like I say, we didn't finish them out. We just stubbed sewer lines in, water lines in. Um, I don't think those had any roof drains on them. Uh, we did do grease waste lines and grease traps. So we had a little bit of plumbing on it for the future fin uh, finish out of the tenants. Let's see, you go and then I go. Here I go, here I go. So the Panera Bread wasn't here. We basically started this project. We paved all these streets and everything. Not me, but the, the general contractor that I was working for. I was here the whole time watching all this go up. And to the right hand side, we have all of these shops and they call this a anchor building. And it has a whole bunch of different lease spaces in it. This one, just looking, going down the line, I see um, DSW shoes. Um, 
Victorid Bath and Body Works. Looks like a Victoria's Secret, PetSmart, Kirkland's, Famous Footwear, Ulta, Old Navy, Ross, TJ Maxx. So I did, I stubbed in water lines and sewer lines and um, whatever else they needed for the plumbing into these buildings and got them ready for the people to come finish them out. So we did the four up by the road. I did all this whole line right here, the whole, all the way from one end to the other. And this is all solid rock, okay? Blue rock, good hard stuff. You gotta have a special piece of equipment to, to get pipes in the ground. So we had to contract out a rock trencher a giant rock trencher that had a depth he could go eight foot deep and he had a boom that was three foot wide that he was cutting trenches three foot wide and he could go up to eight foot deep so all the way down that whole big building we had to cut all of those trenches for all the plumbing and then we had this one building down here and when i say down here you'll notice that we're going down a in a hole right here going down a hill so to the left right here I did this building with the mattress firm GNC all of this stuff so I had two grease traps down here sewer line come out come came out this end of the building and I have grease traps that are in the ground over here we were rock trenching and we over trenched and wound up hitting a water line 12 inch water main that's directly under that red fire lane marker those lids right there are my grease trap lids so right underneath that red paint on that curb there is a 12 inch water main within about two minutes of hitting that 12 inch water main all this was underwater we had about three feet of water right here and this is a low spot none of these drains were here nothing was draining and that Dick's, it's actually Dick's Sporting Goods and Field and Stream right there. They were just prepping the pad to get ready for concrete pour. So all the water flooded out that whole pad over there too. So within a matter of, I don't know, I'd say about six minutes, we had a lake right here. And I actually drained 400,000 gallons of water out of that water tower. The city guys told me that they have never seen more than two pumps kick on to fill that water tower. Um, we had all four, we had all four pumps. There's four pumps. We had all four pumps running, trying to fill the water tower and it was still losing water. Uh, they said they had never heard so many alarms going off. They had alarms going off. They didn't even know what they were. So, when it was all said and done, I think it cost about 12000 7000 to fix the utilities that we broke, 5000 to redo the pad on Dick's Sporting Goods. So that was 12000 And I guess it was estimated at about um, $35,000 worth of water is what we lost. So, as a plumber with 25 years experience, I know that stuff happens every day. And if it don't, you ain't doing nothing. So, that's my tour of Prosper, Texas. Gonna be a little different than everybody else's, but I appreciate y'all riding with me. I'm gonna keep on swerving. Hit that subscribe button. We need more subscribers We're trying to grow my channel. We've been doing this a month and we're doing great. And I appreciate everybody joining me for the ride. So click that subscribe button. Join me for the next one. Click one of those links. Watch another video. We'll see y'all later. Bye y'all.